Hi, this is Dr. Nick. I'm the Incrementalist. I'm here with Healthcare Now Radio, Health Innovation Media. I'm at the Health Show, and I'm here with Amy McDonough. She is the General Manager for Fitbit Health Solutions. Amy, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Dr. Nick. Happy to be here. So tell us a little bit about what's going on with Fitbit today. Where are you? What's been uh, the latest innovations, and uh, what are you excited about? Sure. So we're really excited about our Fitbit Health Solutions business. Um, we're on track to reach $100 million in revenue this year. Wow. And that's working by integrating into the healthcare system more deeply, um, taking our four foundational behaviors that, we're, that we believe and know uh, help affect not only wellness, but chronic care management as well. And we're bringing those into our work with more than 1,700 enterprise employers, as well as 100 plants that we're working with directly. And you've got some new partnerships, right? That's right. Yeah, we just recently announced a partnership with uh, BMS Pfizer Alliance. And what that is, is we're collaborating with them to develop to, around AFib. So AFib, is, as I'm sure a lot of your listeners know, is something that... Um, affects a broad amount of people, 808 million in the U.S., but 25% are left undiagnosed until they have an event like a stroke. So how can we provide better education, awareness, and early detection to help them with their care pathway, help them understand and catch those earlier on in the cycle, um, and then right, bring them to the right care at the right time. Um, and so that's really something we're, we're proud to be partnering with them on, um, alongside, of course, our submission into the upcoming submission to the FDA around our sleep uh, apnea and AFib detection algorithms. So, so sleep apnea that. really sort of triggers my uh, interest. You know, that's a, a fundamental uh, health issue. Yes. Um, severely undiagnosed. I think one of the pushbacks that I hear, and you know, I, I think it's important to cover is, okay, so great, you're going to diagnose it or you see it, but is this just going to create a bunch of false positives? How are you dealing with that problem? I'm really glad you asked that question. So because our approach is not just about a health alert, it is about the upfront education and awareness, right? Mm -hmm. So it's around healthy sleep habits. How do you get more Z's? How do you pull this together? You know, how do we you all get, want more Z's? We all need clear, more right? Z's, right? <laughs> and we actually just released a sleep score that actually was really asked for by our users. So we give you lots of data about your sleep, your REM right. sleep, etc. Our long battery life allows us to do that. But how do you take that information and know what does that mean for me? Did I sleep well? Did I not? So we, we really, uh, we just released a sleep score that gives us kind of, you know, you can say I got an 87 last night, which is a good sleep. Um, and how do you, and the different variables, including resting heart rate that so, go into so that. So let's talk about that. What, yeah. what are the what are the inputs to that? Sure. Um, you know, I, I agree that simple measure is something that we're yeah. all looking for. Yes. It, it's, it, you know, great. Give me 1600 variables. What the hell do I do with that? Sure. A single sort of, you know, almost red light, green light, yeah. amber. What's going into that and, and what's right. the data behind that? Yeah, so we're using, you know, of course, our sensors on the wrist. Really, the, there's three crime you measures, and yet you actually are able to dig into that as a user if you want to. Oh, thank but we're, God. Yes, so it's not just a score that's a mystery score. Right. It's actually components that make up to it. It's how long uh, did you sleep? So, you know, your restfulness of how long you were asleep. It's uh, your levels of sleep. So sleep, uh, light, REM, um, and deep sleep. Um, and then also your rest restoration is what we're calling it within sleep. So how long during your sleep were you below your resting heart rate? So you're rate? talking about the different levels of sleep, That's like right. level one, level four, and yes. so forth. So right. we're looking okay. at all of those. Yeah. And that. And do you provide that information three, as well? We do. We wow, provide your exciting. levels of sleep. Yeah. Um, and your uh, and then we take those three metrics. We pull it into an aggregate score to say was my good my sleep good fair, excellent last night. Right. Um, and then more importantly, we're using AI to also then look at correlations between sleep and the other parts of and your day that we know. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And so, is that a passive activity or are you asking questions? How's that sort of a... So it's um, primarily activity uh, captured on right. the wrist through our so sensors. So it's a passive activity, Mo right? For the most part, yeah. yes. But you can also input uh, items as well. So for example, what you're eating. But I got one this week that said for uh, that I'm a weekend warrior. So I take a lot more, I do a lot more activity. Yeah, you're like a thousand million people, <laughs> I want to say. I but. am. Um, except here at the health show where you get a lot of steps. But um, so, you know, I'm a weekend warrior, not as active during the week when I'm right. commuting and working. Um, but it, you know, it recognized that I was getting about 5,000 more steps 
on the week day, on the weekends, and then it said, and you're also sleeping more. Sleeping better as a result. Of that. It's not really yes. intriguing, right? So yeah. what's the correlation between those? How do you can you incorporate that into your day? Was the kind of challenge? To well, so me. the great the great piece of data for you is work more steps during the week, and then you're going to get better sleep. Exactly. Right? That's exactly. Very cool, so those really insights and guidance yeah. is really where we're going. Right. Um, and so and so sleep apnea. Of course, I want to get back to your question around: Are we going to flood the system? Right. You know, there is a concept of just is it a is it a health alert? It's why we and the AFib partnership that we have with the right. BMS Pfizer Alliance is a good example of this. It's education and awareness up front. It's guided programs. So we have a Get More Z's program. Right. We give you things like sleep scores. And then if you need it, we will help work with the healthcare system, with our payer and partner relationships to be able to bring you to the right help at the right time. So um, actually incorporating the support services and the feedback mechanisms as well. That's exactly right. right. We actually yeah. just also collaborated with physicians because we want to integrate with the healthcare system and help it work more efficiently and lead to better outcomes and more cost savings. Fantastic. So, yeah, so we just worked with some physicians on our wellness report, um, which you can also, so we were anecdotally hearing, you're going to a lot of physicians saying, here's my Fitbit data, yeah, right. you know, yeah, tell me what to do with it. Um, we collaborated with physicians and came up with a wellness report that actually said, so that here's what do the doctors it. want right. to know? How yeah. do we make this, this make information it, it useful actionable? For physicians. Wow. Exactly. Yeah. Exciting. So that's also something that we've recently made available. So really exciting developments on that front. That's fantastic. Yeah. And well, we're. Oh, I apologize. Yeah, no. I was just going to say we're also bringing that to nation states. Um, so we're, we just recently announced a collaboration with Live uh, Healthy SG, which is the government of Singapore um, and the Health Promotion Board, to bring to them they're very focused on population health. So I, I'm excited about that, but I'm just going to push back a little bit because of all the countries, I want to say they're the healthiest. So they need it the least, quite honestly, right? You know what? It's a great point, but they actually suffer. But that's and partly why. That's right. So they are. They are committed as a, a yeah. country to taking innovation and technology you, you've got and applying that, that to right? healthcare. Yeah. So I think that's great. But that said, they deal with a lot of the same common, common and costly conditions that we deal with right. here um, and globally, right? No, so, I'm, I'm, I'm teasing a little yeah. bit, but you know, you got to credit them. They're really focused on it. Absolutely. And that's fantastic. Great, great yes. promotion and opportunity for Fitbit both to influence change, but also gather data, I would imagine, as part of that. That's right. You know, with users' consent, of course, but it's going to allow us to prevent, they, they're getting all that Fitbit has to offer. So they're getting a device which can help activate then right. those guided programs and insights that we talked about and our one on one health coaching. Right. If uh, you know, if they choose and right. they want and they some need, more support yeah. there. Um, so it's really bringing all of Fitbit's value in, to the market. I think it's really a model to watch and one to follow. Fantastic. So it just remains for me to thank you, Amy, for joining me. Thank um, you. Appreciate you joining me here at the uh, health conference. This is Dr. Nick. I'm the incrementalist. I'm here at the health conference in Las Vegas, 2019. And I'm here with Health Innovation Media and Healthcare Now Radio.